Hey up everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome to the Project Textile. Right over there is my 1993 Honda CR125 dirt bike, which I've owned for around about 12 years. And this bike has not been run off, started, fired up, or even had fuel in it for I'd say about six, seven, maybe eight years. I've not counted yet. So it's got a little bit of a, a, a backstory of this bike, a little bit of a sad backstory. I'm going to explain everything to you in just a moment, you'll see. So stay tuned, let's take a look at it. I wanted one of these bikes for such a long time. I can remember when they came out and, I, and I've got a magazine somewhere, my first DBR magazine with the 1993 CR125, 250, 85, 500, stuff like that. Um, I can remember looking at it, there were posters in the middle with all of them, looking brand new and shiny. And I said to myself, I really, really want one of those bikes. It's my dream bike, dean dirt bike at the time. And it took a long time for me to get one. But this bike does have a, a backstory, a sad backstory. So if you look at my Instagram, you'll see pictures of this CR125. When I did restore it, it was beautiful. The bike looked brand spanking new. It was probably one of my best restorations on a dirt bike. It was a dream bike of mine, like I said, and it got stolen. So the bike got stolen. It was in um, a friend's garage, my friend's garage at the time. We rebuilt this bike, restored it, and we took it to a track um, Becky rode it to run the bike in for the first time. I put a lot of money into this bike at that time. I think we put out two and a half grand in something like that into it. Um, we took it to the track and the following Wednesday, this was on Sunday, the following Wednesday, the bike was stolen from a friend's garage along with two other four strokes. I believe the thieves came for the four strokes and they saw this as a little bit of a bonus and took it but decided to burn it out on a public footpath right behind our house while we were asleep at night. Such a shocking thing to do. A very rare bike. It had a lot of original parts on it, original seats, stuff like that, things you just cannot buy anymore. And it's such a shame after all that work and waiting years to get one of these just to find it burnt out. So if my friend's son received a photograph of this bike from one of his friends walking to school. Um, it's a pile of... A pile of burnt, burnt, smouldering plastic mess on the floor, and so is this this one of your bikes that got stolen? And after seeing the picture, obviously it was our bike that got stolen. Their two bikes was a KTM SXF two fifty and a CRF two fifty. Uh, one what, what used to be mine, they were never recovered. Um, I think one was seen at a track somewhere a year later, something like that. But we got we got this bike back anyway. We went to collect it from the garage. We had to pay 190 quid. That's another story. I'm not going to go into. The garage that took the bike were actually common crooks, and they have gone to prison. Their owner's gone to prison for fraud, apparently frauding the police. So anyway, um, we got the bike back. It stunk. Everything was gone on it. The plastic, everything, anything plastic and aluminium was basically torched and gone. The carburetor was gone. The exhaust was all black i just bought a brand new dep exhaust for it as well um it's not really seen any any use and we had to decide what we we're gonna do with it the the bike stunk the garage out and i quickly got it home and started stripping all the burnt pieces off it straight away i stripped the engine out absolutely everything and within that week we got the a frame out ready for powder coin and took it the frame Handlebars, subframe, straight to the powder coaters to get it redone. Um, and the swing arm, we sorted that out as well. The engine appeared to be in great condition. We stripped it. The engine had a complete rebuild, so um, we stripped the engine apart to check the piston and stuff like that. I threw the piston away, put a new piston in it because I had to check see if anything's warped with heat, which it hadn't. The fire was mostly concentrated above here, all this area, because it was laid on its side. Um, Mugara gone, the front wheel is the original front wheel from it. The rear wheel is still really in a bit of a pissy state. I think there's a, a patch on it somewhere where the damage occurred. Oh, there you can see some of that powder coating flaked off as well. The thieves actually kept the frame number on. They didn't have time to remove that, but they removed the engine number down there. Let me get a light on to show you. There we go. So you can see where a, a screwdriver has gone in here and they pulled out the engine number. It's a shame that because they did have the engine number stamp on there. I don't know why they did that. Um, I'm not going to burn it out anyway. A bit of a shame. But believe it or not, I have had this bike running when it was in my dad's garage, the old garage which I started building it in. 
I've had the bike fired up. I put a new piss in it. Uh, got the rad some radiators, some aluminium ones. Built it all the best I could. I had an intravenous drip of fuel to the carburetor, which I've got on there. And the bike did fire up after a couple of kicks. It sounded pretty good. So, and that's actually where the restoration stopped. I got it to this state thinking I'm going to build the bike up completely and get it out and ride it, which I really wish I did. But I bought a, bought a Ducati 1198 at the time with a top end, a head gasket fairly. So I rebuilt the top end on that bike and that just completely put this this bike to a hold. And it's been just like that ever since. So I've not done anything else with it. Parts are scattered all over the place, so I'm digging them out now. And there's no point in keeping it here and pushed away to one side in the garage looking half built. So I'm deciding to get it all built up again. And I think we're going to sell it. I'm not going to put any more money into this bike. It, it is what it is. We'll get it running and put fit every part we've got for it. I've got a tank, I've got a full plastics, I've got a seat for it, I've got a seat cover. Got a seat from America because it's hard to find the original seat for one of these now. We've got all the brake components, stuff like that. They probably will want a rebuild, to be fair. I've put new seals in the front, but it's not really uh, getting up the sufficient compression. I'm not getting much air back out of it now, so there's not enough compression in there to go out for a play. Anyway, enough of that chit-chat. Let's get to work and get him assembled. Tank seen better days like all this parts, the tank and everything, and um, the plastics are obviously what I bought from eBay years ago. <clears throat> I got the tank from America, I don't believe it looks like it's in really rough state, um, but underneath it's pretty much pristine. Underneath it's not even scratched at all. But all this, all this wants literally is a rub down with some 600 grit wet, wet paper, and then some 800. Thousand fifteen, work your way up until it's got a nice shine and that will that will come up that only thing is a petrol staining You'll never get that out, but there's not too much petrol stain on there. So that tank will Restore even these plastic panels here. This will all polish up a bit of hard work, but it will polish up Okay Let's get some fuel in him Let's see if it fires I know it does have a spark at the plug, I tried it out when I was building the RM, so but the coil's not in brilliant condition. And this has not had fuel in it for a long time, so I'll see if it pisses out all the carburetor or something. You're excited? I am. Always have a screwdriver ready to make any fueling adjustments. Just 
checking for leaks so I'll just put the fuel on um, and I'll see if the carb overflows I've been sat there for years, I reckon, nearly. Whoa. That's a six or seven years. That last time this fired up seven years, one fucking kick. That is unreal. Wow. We're in lean though.
I've lost for words, absolutely lost for words. Um, wow, wow. That was not staged, by the way. One, one kick. It's unreal. That's been seven years of that, this bike. Uh, I'm not counting it, it's roughly seven years. I know I had my, probably more, to be honest with you. I'll have to have a look on the video that I've got when I last fired it up. Um, it's not been ridden since 2012. Wow. Well, it's a good freaking mechanic, innit? Who built that engine. Um, yeah, what do I do now? So I've got a pile of stuff down here. A new seat cover, some graphics, plastics. I've bolt all those on. I might put that little sticker on the side of the panel there. I am. So, I mean, honestly, I'm so tempted to um, get his bike on the track. That is just unheard of. I've never... I've not left the bike that long. Um half built you know just to run like that idle straight away um that is incredible i'm so impressed right then i'll get these bits and bats on and might scrub that tank There we go, starting to look a lot better that isn't it? A little bit of dirt shifter and some 400 grit paper has brought that lovely. I've done the frame as well, give it a clean over with some dirt shifter. It's starting to shine up a little bit isn't it? So what I'm going to do now is get these panels put on, get the seat panel put on. Um, yeah, the, the side panels put on. That exhaust is not from this model at all. It's not a problem because all I have to do is cut that off there, it's aluminium. Cut it off and just TIG weld it further around so it does fit. It does almost fit. I think it's from a 2001 or something like that. I can't remember what that was from, but that was the intention. Apart from that, I could get a new sleeve for it. Uh, the original silencer for this is totally lost, unfortunately. I think uh, that piece there was thrown into a hedge. I can't, I can't remember when I looked at, the, looked at the crash site, the wreck site, sorry. That this bike was laid to rest after it was burnt out. There were a few bits of metal here and there that surrounded it. Um, some things left over, like carbon and stuff like that. I still know the spot where it was. I might go have a look, visit the spot where it laid. Uh, but I, I can't remember. I think that exhaust, this was all melted. And all, all that was remaining was the end cap and the tent and the pipe, link pipe. And I think... Uh, I can remember just kicking it into the hedge, so it might still be in that edge after all those years. You never know. Obviously, someone like me walking around a public footpath area, rummaging through the hedges might spark an interest with people, so I don't want to be doing that. Right. And this is where it was burnt out. Somewhere here. I've had a look in the bush there. I can't find that part anyway, so it's long gone. This is where it was here. All that time ago. All right. Right, so that is as much as I'm going to be doing with it tonight. I've got the decals to put on. I don't know whether to put them on or not. I might stick them on tomorrow. We'll see. It's a shame I couldn't get the seat cover on. The seat cover's here. I've not got a stapler, to be honest, to get that um, fitted correctly. But I think I'll give it one last fire up. See if it's still, still okay. And then uh, I'll call it a night.
I've got slippers on, so not the best thing to be kicking a bike up with. Yeah, I'll get some shoes on. Quite a lot of compression that for a one two five. <laughs> it's dented my foot. selector on and uh, might pull those graphics on tomorrow that's it thank you for watching